Father and our Lord, we want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share your word with your children. May the entrance of your word bring not just light, but bring also your power. Let your power be made manifest. Let yokes be broken. Let curses be lifted. And let your glory cover your children. May they fulfill destiny. Make them great. Make them very great. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You can be seated. A lot of people don't know the value. They don't know the power. They don't know that the destiny can be wrecked. Desti Let me tell you. There is something more destructive than witchcraft. It is the curse of a father. Or the curse of a mother. You see, let me give you a story about the father's blessing and a curse. There is somebody in her village. Somebody where? In her village. Many years ago, we were praying for this man. And while we were praying for this man, I'm talking about the curse, because some of our sisters should be careful with their mother. This brother was going through things. When I say things, strange happenings. He was one of the richest men in the state where he stays. I don't want to call state name today. But he is not in eastern Nigeria. But suddenly everything went upside down. And when we were praying for him, in fact, all his warehouse burnt the same day at different positions. Warehouse. Imagine warehouse in Enifite. But warehouse in uh, Amansi. Bont warehouse in Abagana, Bont warehouse in Ekulobia, Bont. That's not a normal occurrence, is it? Huh? That's what happened to this brother. And when we began to pray over him, we discovered somebody who put his hand on his stomach and will be uttering words. Arrows will be entering this brother's body and be dissolving. The person will hold the breast and will be uttering some words. And as she is uttering the words, arrows will be moving out from his body, entering the brother and will be dissolving. Ha! What is the meaning of this? So, quickly we called the brother. He came. And we said, bro, what's going on? Look at what we saw. And the brother said, that that's my mother. That's what? But can you see, and it not just the mother, the arrows were already working. The business has collapsed. Not only the business collapsed, his health was collapsing. He was having a strange manifestation of what we call diabetes. And it had affected him to a level that he was using special ordered Bible board print to read. And he was a Christian. If the bless, if the curse of a mother could be supersonic like that, don't you think that her blessing can also be supersonic? Huh? Look into any family. If you see any child doing well, he has the blessing of the father or the mother. Did you hear what I said? Listen, let me give you another one before I, come. I go to open the Bible. I like examples. Here was a man. His only his son. What did I say? The story I'm telling now has to do with this guy. One of his uncles. This, his uncle, is almost a replica of his father. My brethren, it is not common to see a father having strange problem with his son that is his replica. That's unusual. This, my brother, what happened to him? He and the father like this. What I'm trying to show you is that 
Somebody can also make set your father against you. Because that is the easiest way to destroy you. Yeah. Because this man and the son, they are like this. And this young man is not the first son. And suddenly, he and the father became the worst enemies. One day, the father came out. You know, I hope you are evil people. The man came on top of that omo, carry his water, bucket of water, put by the side, carry his knife. He was sharpening the knife, pour water on it, and was raining curses on him. He will pour water, he will look at the sun, he raised curse, raised curse, raised curse. This young man became useless. Nothing in his life is working. Even be, listen, he was, I used to tell them that in our family, this guy, as far as I'm concerned, is the most gifted. When you talk, his star is the best. But he was so shattered that even ordinary, uh, what do you call it, watch night, they made him in a company. Immediately his son got admission, they sacked him on that job. So that the world son would not be able to finish, go to school. At a point, what I had the young man called me and said, Daddy, that he wants to withdraw from the school. That I have tried. I told him, no, you can't withdraw this blame. And you know the person who wants to withdraw? This is a, an intelligent boy that is reading physics in the university. Why? The case. His father, his grandfather, altered on the father, have a generational effect. Causes do not break until they are broken. That man lost his eyes. Anya, which is a problem, dapple physically and dropped on the ground. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He has, he has, I mean, he knows the test of hell, even though he's on the earth. Why? The father cursed him. But there is one of the songs the father blessed. And this his son never he, even, he managed to go to secondary primary school because I know he is almost like my immediate senior, senior brother in the family by family lineage. So he managed to go to school. When the father could not train him beyond primary school, somebody trained him in the commercial. Commercial, not even secondary school. Then when they finished his early school, somebody helped him get a job in the union bank. Why he entered the union bank? Before you know it, he became... Uh, he began to study by himself. Rest, got past some courses. Before you say Jack Robinson, he became a bank manager in Union Bank. Why? He has the blessing of his father. A father can revoke his blessings. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, one day God came and said, Samuel, he said, sir, he said, go and anoint me Saul as the king over Israel. And the Bible says, Samuel went and anointed Saul king and the anointing of father Samuel as a prophet and a spiritual father lifted Samuel from a nobody, from an ordinary frustrated cow farmer. He became the king over Israel. Another day, God said, I regret that I made Saul king. Who is regretting? And the spirit of God left Saul. From that day, his throne became vacant. And the next thing, God said, anoint me who? David. God used me to raise a young man. And I prayed over him. In fact, that was one of my greatest mistakes in life because I said, God, freely you gave me Everything you put inside me, put inside this young man. I will pray that kind of prayer again. I can only pray it for my son. Yeah. The young man, eh? the anointing he had was crazy. It was like me and him began to compete for the ministry. Now I'm telling you, as at that time I wasn't seeing much, but he himself, he would stand with his eyes open. He was seeing and hearing God. And suddenly, the boy began entered into groups. He became friends to enemies that insult and disgust me. 
And whatever you don't honor can never honor you, brother. Because this thing is a spiritual thing. Never forget it. So, he got to a point and a point. I sent for him and asked him to warn him. Well, he felt that after all, he's anointed. And uh, he, some of us forget the Bible. That the only Igbo say, no koro, and a toka. Is that true? Yes. You believe that prophecy? <laughs> I hope you are hearing me. And eventually, what happened? I got offended one day. What did I say? I got offended. And I said to God, you anointed so. You asked somebody to anoint so. They anointed so. Another day you said that you regretted anointing who? This so. I said, me, I am also regretting what you use me to invest in this life. Therefore, I am calling them back. Listen to me. By the time I was doing this thing, that young man had opened ministries, had more than eight branches. How many branches? And I was only having only this woman. And when I say eight branches, his branch in Enugu was bigger than the whole of, just one branch in Enugu was bigger than the whole of my membership here. And that shows you also, when God begins to bless you, you need humility. You need what? Don't ever think you, you are running away from your father. A man has some children and there are about five ladies. All of them get married, come back home, marry, come back home. One even never married. And at the end of the day, when they began to fast and pray, that one that was not married, but she was already 40 something years. And then the father became sick. And she was the one taking care of the man, the man so much. And one day the man said, looked at her, Ida, you marry with your sister. Can I tell your pastor I want to see you? This one you always carry in Bible. Let me see your tell your father what pastor I want to see. He said, ah, my pastor is very busy. He may not come. He said, just tell him. And he went and told this pastor, very popular pastor, known in the Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Very busy. But the man made time and came to see this sister's pastor, a father. And the man was on the bed. He said to her, the pastor, he said, you know, he told the daughter, everyone should leave. They left. He said, pastor, you know, you know, when we are looking for money, all these girls here, they cannot marry. Can't stay in their husband's place if they marry. Because we are looking for money. But this one, you know, because she's always carrying the Bible, and praying. And she's been taking care of me. I've called you so that you can use prayer and know whether there is something that can be done. Did you see that? Huh? Here. One made a confession also to me. She trained the girl. The father, the father, I think the father and the mother died. She became a kind of stepmother to her. Raise her, train her. And at a point, fear came on her that she may not want to take care of her tomorrow. So she blocked her from getting married. So that she would take care of her. Parents have power. You want me to give you more explanation? Listen to me. God has a covenant with Israel. Three of us. Why? I'm asking you. Did God have see Israel? This is the, did God see them and say, let's sign a covenant? So who did God discover? Abraham. Abraham, the father of Israel. And that covenant is speaking. The same way, whether you like it or not, the covenant between me and God is speaking and speaks over their lives, over my children.
<laughs> Immediately after God created man, the first equipment he gave them was his blessing as a father. Why? Blessing as a, blessing as a father is the key for supernatural fulfillment. It is the blessing of the father that produces great men. The blessings of God, the blessings of the father that will produce great men. And that's why I know that after this meeting, you will be great. Yeah. The blessings of the Father attracts the favor of God and attracts the favor of men. So after this meeting, may you have the favor of God. Yeah. May you have the favor of man. Yeah. Wherever you appear, favor will speak. Yeah. Wherever your certificate appears, favor will speak. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. The blessings of the father, like I told you about that young man. The father could only trade him be, uh, for, from primary one to five to six. And the father couldn't trade him more. But the favor spoke on his life. To the end, let's say that he became a bank manager. Not in ABCB. Not in mercantile dying banks. But in Union Bank those days. If God did it for him, why would not God do it for you? He didn't receive the blessing. Listen, the Bible said the spiritual is greater than the physical. That's why we are here, in case you don't know. Somebody said the spiritual is greater than the physical. That's why we are here. Why? If your father did not bless you, I am here to bless you. Because I am a spiritual father. I didn't hear a better amen. You are blessed. 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 Doors will open unto you. Yeah. Where others are rejected, you shall not be rejected. Yeah. Where you appear, favor will speak. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the book of Genesis chapter 49, it was Jacob and his children. A day came, and Jacob called his sons and said unto them, Gather yourselves together, and you are gathered now, that I may tell you that which shall be for you in the last days. Can you imagine? He was saying, come, let me prophesy over you the thing that will happen to your life. Which means, the favor, the blessing of the Father will determine your future. And that was he was telling them. And he did determine their future. Look at, let me give you one. Gather yourselves together. Hear ye sons of Jacob, hearken unto Israel, your father. Reuben, thou art my first son. My might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power as the first son, unstable as the water, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then thou defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. That's what the man was saying. That was yesterday. You were excellent. But from now, you will no more excel. Because you got into your father's bed. And you defied it. And he got into my bed. Listen to me. You know something dangerous about this case? The Bible says, if you read it down, I don't have the time. This is a good example. He got up and blessed them. Levi, Simeon, who knew I was the chairman of anger. Continue. You can even transfer it to Moses, the anger. I hope you are hearing me. Did they transfer it? Okay. <laughs> so they think they work. And then he came back again. He said, Judah, you are going to be producing the king in Israel. Did they produce? Are they still producing? Okay, well, he was telling them what will be for them tomorrow. Today. Why? He understood, my brother. Some of our parents know their power and the authority as a father over you. And when he when you meet a father who knows, please follow him with wisdom, follow him with humility, follow him like a fool. If you like, lie on the ground, let him walk on top of you. When he hammer blessing on you, you will stand tall all the days of the remaining days of your life. That's the truth. That's the truth. 
This man finished blessing these children. One by one, when he got to the last, I'm sure Reuben was waiting to lie, kneel down and say, Daddy, please forgive me, I'm sorry. And then maybe call his uncles to come and talk to his father and tell him that he's, he has repented. Am I right? The Bible said he gathered his foot and died. Reuben didn't have that chance. Please, hear this. Even when your father has offended you, marched on you, hurt you, wounded you, be careful. What did I say? Be careful. Because your own responsibility is to follow him with love. A girl got married, and when you marry, you pass the university, you think everything is over. You don't know that. It will look as if there is no cause speaking. So eventually, what happened? The husband is an architect. No job. Nothing was moving. So the minister came to pray for her. And when the man of God said he wanted to pray for her, he saw the girl and saw a man. And the two of them were backing each other. He opened his eyes and asked your girl, what, where is your father? He said, I don't want to hear about him. I don't want to hear about him. And the man of God said to him, what is the problem? He said, my father raped me when I was 16 years. And not only he raped me at 16 years, he raped me four other times. The sister found it difficult. Thank God for the husband who was around. And then, the man of God told the husband. They agreed. Visited the father. She had married. Even the father, I don't think, was told. And then she went. When she now went and met the father, bought some gifts. And when they got there, the father said, Ah, where did you start giving me gifts? What do you expect him to do? She got offended. Remember the pain again. The husband said to him, Please, daddy, we are sorry. And knelt down and said, We came to bless you. You are, you are my father in law, and this is your daughter. We came here to tell you that we, love, we appreciate you. And that that honor you des- we don't want, we can't take it away from you because it is God that placed her placed her under you. The man knelt down, spoke to the father. The daughter knelt down, started crying, and said, "Daddy, please bless me." The father now got up. He said, "It's okay. It will be well with you. Whatever you want, you get it." He blessed. He blessed him. And listen to me. That word, if just that word. Go, it will be well with you. Here, you can here. Oh, God, you know, oh, and they got up and left. Less than two weeks, the husband got five million naira contract. How many million? These are people that we are finding got to eat. Brother, it is good that we understand. Make no mistake about it. God has given our fathers authority over the children. Make no mistake about it. He is the high priest of God over the family. It is good we understand this mystery and be careful with our fathers. Children must learn to respect, learn to honor, learn to serve their father if you really desire their blessing. Children must learn to respect and honor their father. Please honor them. Not here. The blessings that Jacob altered over the children, what happened? He was saying them, not looking at their character. He was looking at their relationship with him. He was looking at observ- observations he had made about their lives. He began to tell them, this one, you are like so, so, so. You are like this. Bell like this, like this. Is it not so? He said, this one, ah, angry guys. Hey, let me my spirit come into their, into their this gathering. It was what he was seeing. So, if you want your father's blessing, please, watch your behavior. Watch your relationship with him. These things are not automatic. A mother told a daughter, when you go to deliver, you will realize I'm your mother. That was all. Because of the way the guy was insulting the mother. And that was, listen, you have not seen what a mother go through to have a child. If you have, hey, please, please, even anywhere you are going, when your mother said, do this for me, you drop it and go and do. You drop it. Genesis chapter 27 to 29. 
29, 39, and then 40. Genesis 27 from verse 27 to 29. Isaac blessed Jacob. And look at what happened there. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him. And said, see the smell of my son. Do you see? The smell of my son. The thing comes from the heart. Huh? As the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore God give thee the, that's the blessing. The dew of heaven. And the fatness of the earth. Plenty of corn and of wine. Listen, if you look at that blessing, when Jacob was blessing his children, he stood on that blessing. According to his God, he blessed them. The blessings of his fathers. He released it again. And the thing was making. Isaac, because of blessings, he came from his father. He was planting. Where others were not succeeding, he was succeeding. I thought somebody is hearing me here. If your father didn't bless you, I bless you now. Amen. But on one condition, that you have changed. That you have done what? Amen. Yes. A young man came here. And I was interviewing him. What's the problem? The wife, he left the wife in, in Lagos. And came down to Oka. Abandoned her there. What's the problem? He quarreled with the, the wife has been giving him problem in, Lego, in uh, uh, Aba. He abandoned her there. Went to Lagos. Began to do well in Lagos. Went and brought the wife. She began to give him problem. Gave him so much problem. He abandoned her. Came back to Oka. When he came to Oka, I asked him, what's the problem? Why can't you live with your wife? He said that the father was always... That's his own side. I didn't hear his father's side. And I'm learning now. When you tell me you have a problem with your husband, I won't believe everything you're saying because I have discovered that many sisters don't tell all the truth. So this brother said that the father was always bullying the mother. And he didn't like that. So he supported the mother. And he uh, got to a point one day, the father to look at him and said, my son, you are my first son. And I don't know why you decided to take side against me. He said, yeah, is that a blessing? And is the wife doing, is the wife doing it to him now? Listen, that's why I said the blessing and the curse, the words of a father, they are powerful. He still left Oka to Asaba. I don't know where he is now. I decided to adopt this foolish boy as a son. That's, these are reasons why I'm no more in a hurry to adopt anybody. So don't come to me tomorrow when daddy adopted me. I'm not coming. I'm not adopting. Because I adopted this young man to cancel the curse of his father. Oh my God. The boy made me what? He made Omem Giri. Ah. The devil doesn't want him to be a great man in life. And you know, some of you, spirits following you, don't want you to be great. And you are cooperating with it. The day he left Oka to Asaba, I don't know. He didn't tell me. If I'm a father, the Bible says, Where now is my honor? Please. We have liberty. The Bible said, don't use, touch your neighbor, say, don't use your liberty anyhow. Tell him. Don't use your liberty anyhow. This is one thing many of us don't know. And so, <laughs> I had to withdraw my will though. Say, because I can't, be, I can't be your father. Esau knew the importance of the father's blessing. And that's why he insisted, if we don't have the time, Read the other scripture. He cried. He cried. Why? He was waiting for that day. He said, Daddy, don't you have even one for me? Because he realized the power of the Father's blessing. I thought somebody's hearing me here. Huh? If I am a father to you, I want to bless you now. Because if you are waiting when I will close, <laughs> I will only be sealing the blessing. Are you looking at me? If you are a son or a daughter here, anything that can resist me as a servant of God will not resist you. Any power, any demon, any spirit, no matter their height, their covenant, their sacrifice, if they cannot resist me, they can't resist you. They can't resist you. They can't resist you. They can't resist you. They can't resist you.
We had the places I couldn't enter, you enter there. The ones I couldn't do, you do them. You will do them. You will do them. In the name of Jesus. Power of God. Holy Ghost, you are my director general. Establish the word. You can sit down. A lot of people are struggling today because of the lack of value. They don't value the blessing of the father. They don't value the blessing of the mother. They live their life as if they are the one who brought themselves into the earth. They live their life because they feel that these things are inconsequential. And that's why it doesn't work for them. But I want you today to change. You need the blessing of the father. You need the blessing of the mother. When you see a father, honor him. When you see a, a mother, respect them. Sometimes, they will be crossing the road. I will park my car. Some I will use my car and block the road and say, Mama, go ahead. I'll block the road. Everybody will stand behind and say, Mama, go Because why? I know that if I don't respect this woman and allow her to cross, it will be good for her to cross. And anything can happen here. She may be running up and down. Children then will, who are no upbringing, they will have respect for them. So what do I do? I block the road. I did it at the quarter junction the other day. I think I was carrying my daughter and somebody and we were going. And I blocked the road. And everybody had to stay there. Was, even though they, I had to put some of them in the traffic lights, I blocked them from succeeding. But I was saving their life. About three of them, self. Honor them. What did I say? Honor them. I want you to remember that Jacob, I hope you remember. Hello? Do you remember that Jacob was blessed by who? Isaac the father. True of all. But do you remember again that the same Jacob saw an angel and fought with the angel to bless him? Why? He knows the power and the importance of father's blessing. Many of you would have overlooked it. I would have a blessing here. MGM, man. Listen to me. Every father, every mother carries a blessing. My father died when I was two and a half years. Maybe I should tell you. So I don't know him. But I have my, bless my mother's blessings. Even today she blessed me. I talked with her. But then, I needed the father's blessing. My uncle, who it was, we were told, him and the senior brother, who was a native doctor, they liars and did something, my father died. I overlooked it and continued to Honor him because it's not my business. Is somebody hearing me here? It got to a point that he himself became embarrassed. So one day he asked me, I was a teacher. I was not an evangelist. I was brought. That's the father's blessing. He was altering that world as a head, the general head of the whole family. So he's a priest. And when he finished, I said, Amen. I said, Don't worry. And you know, he said something. That's a hidden, in case you don't know. Oh, that's why I got church. Manobekere, some of you. How do I mean? He doesn't go to church. Mana, every year, his first fruit, yam, a hidden. That first fruit, okay, Somebody say hidden. How many of you normally give God your first fruit? Hidden, they give past you. He knows that Bible and practices it. You see, when you have problem with such hidden, who practice spiritual laws, who respect spiritual laws, how they sophisticated though? They are one day, they will die, 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 and they will die, they lie. <laughs> they, are, they are a stronghold. He said to me, as you serve the Lord, he said, nobody will be able to stand before you. And I laughed. I said, Amen. 
Then I, when I was saying amen, I was laughing inside my heart. You know why? When I was much younger in the faith, that was one of the first promises God gave to me. He said, only be strong. No man will stand before you. And brother, they don't. Malachi chapter 4. Read verse 6. Let's rush out. He will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Least I come and release a curse. Did you see that? God said, he is coming and he is here now. To turn the heart of the fathers to the children so that they will love you, bless you. Turn the heart of the children to their fathers so that the children respect their father, honor their father, be in harmony with their father. He said, without that, he said he will come and do what? Smite the place with a curse. Brother, what do you understand from there? God is calling for love, harmony, oneness of faith between the father and the sons. Whatever, the, whenever there is a strain, look up, listen. Whenever there is what? A strain, a frosty relationship, disagreement, unnecessary quarrel, strife between a father and a son, hear me, a cause will be attracted. So, relate with your father. Relate with your mother. Otherwise, a curse will be attracted. Hear me, my brethren. If you are rude, impolite, rebellious, stubborn, you know the rest, add it to your parents, it is an invitation to a curse. Don't allow him with grief say something. The Bible says obey them that have rule over you as people who give account that I may do it with joy. He said that I will not do it with grief. Why? If I do it with grief, he said it is unprofitable to you. Brethren, a curse from a father physical or spiritual they are normally very destructive. They are normally how? Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Children! Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is what? Go to verse 2. Honor your father and your mother. Which is what? The first promise. The first commandment. With promise. Who is the Bible talking about here now? Your biological parents. He added their father, mother, biological. First, spiritual. They carry blessings. They also carry curses. You can take us to the last one. The three. That it may be what? Well with thee. That thou mayest live long on the earth. Look up. That it may be well with you. Which means not honoring them will make it bad for you. That thou may live long. You can die before your time because of your relationship with your biological and your physical father. Hear me, my brethren. I must warn all of us today, be careful not to break the heart of your spiritual father. Don't break his heart. Don't break the heart of your biological father. Don't break... If we, sisters, be careful with your mother. If you want the blessings of your father, you have to make your father proud. Make him glad. Did you hear what I said? If your father is proud, he will look at you. He will be releasing the blessings over you anyhow. He will be releasing the blessings. Listen to me. I promise myself never to alter anything negative to any of my children. And God has helped me thus far. None of them will say that he has spoken anything negative. They must fulfill destiny. You will fulfill destiny. Amen. All of you looking at me, you fulfill destiny. Amen. Say that he has said, has said I, will I will fulfill destiny. Therefore, Therefore come rain, come sunshine. Come rain, come sunshine. I, will I will fulfill destiny. Yes. I am saying it as a priest of the Most High God, as a spiritual father, and as a physical, a biological father. You will fulfill destiny. You will fulfill destiny. Whatever the powers 
that will say that you will not fulfill this here and now from the altar of God by the priesthood of our Lord Jesus. I judge them. I judge them. I judge them. In the name of Jesus. If your father did not bless you, I am here as a spiritual father. That the spiritual control the physical. And I bring the father's blessings upon your life. I bring the father's blessing upon you. I declare that you will know the Lord. You will fear the Lord. You will love the Lord. You will know him intimately. You will know God affectionately. You will know the Lord as a living reality. The jealousy of Jehovah will shield you. God will be jealous to defend you. God will be jealous to protect you. God will be jealous to take care of you. God will fight your battles. From today, your battle is of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want to show you just some Bible scriptures and I close. Let's go to Proverbs 20.20. I'm trying to show you why you must be careful with your father and with your mother. Whoso cursed his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Look up. Even if you saw your father, your pastor, cursing you in the dream or praying against you, don't pray against your, your spiritual father. Don't pray against your pastor. You'll be taking a risk. Because when you pray against him, what are you doing? You are releasing a curse. I was wondering one sister when they said to her, don't pray, stop praying against, don't, don't be saying negative things against me to God. Why? I will always know. Maximum 72 hours, God will tell me. A pastor in this ministry with a wife, they stood before God and we are praying against me in their bedroom. And I'm a whole too much, but to those ones, by the covenants I have with Jehovah, he must tell me. Because you don't know my covenant. And believe you me, my covenant is rugged. They went and prayed against me. As they were praying against me, heaven brought me into the true room. And I sat, I stood, and was watching them reporting me to God. When they finished reporting me, the Lord asked me, what do you have to say? It was like a vision. And I replied. When I finished replying, they were hearing my own reply. The, because, I woke up. The next day, someone said the next day. I came here and I said to them physically, I said, ah, you know that that case, you were reporting me to God. You didn't win. And believe you me, till today, the wife has never missed a period. I didn't say get pregnant. I have this guy miss a period. Exodus 21, verse 17. Because this thing is a listen, here now has ruined a lot of people. So many of them that left one man, half poor, the first thing they do, I say, now they might approach you by now. Hope we go. I don't judge them. They judge, they destroy themselves. They do what? They destroy themselves. And he that cursed his father or his mother. Shall surely be what? Surely be put to death. Don't curse your father. Biological, spiritual. Don't curse them. Apokole Anuman, Anoya. Osideo Pastor. Don't. Don't curse them. Do you know what? Do you know the battles we go through standing between God and you? Let me share a story. I have a friend, a minister of God. This man of God, he's in the U.S. now. His spiritual father in Nsoka, I'm telling you a life story. His spiritual father at Nsoka had a moral problem. And all of them left the church. So the man left. He went to Enugu, started a church. He had a moral problem. I don't know whether you understand what I mean now. This man was with a pastor in, in, in Soka. The pastor had a moral problem. They left. He left. And because he was called to ministry, he went to Enugu, 
started a ministry, had a moral problem. Came to Oka, in Amobia, he built the church. Had a moral problem. That's what closed down the church. He went back to Joss. When he got to Joss, he had another moral problem. The wife almost left. The tango for her. There was a conference. He decided to go to the conference. The wife followed her. He was at the back. The minister was preaching. From the preaching, the man began to move with one leg. Anointing came on the man. He met him at the back seat and said to him, called him and said, Here you, servant of God. You left, began to call the cities he had been to one by one. And at the end of the day, he said, Father, why? 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 And then, the summary is, when he left his pastor in Osoka, listen, that pastor he left at Osoka, even he left him, the pastor went to God. The pastor did what? Get, got some scriptures from the Bible. Sichineke. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am telling you a life story. But that young man, when God healed him, the same man, who, he arrived in the U.S. Somebody took him to the U.S. From the same church, he got to the U.S. And the person who brought him to the U.S. took him to their church. And they were there, church Abasa. Um, they went to the pastor. The pastor said, there's a pastor from Nigeria here. And uh, let's give him five minutes to come and say hello to the brethren. And that's how they gave him a microphone. He took the microphone. He told me. He said, he has never prophesied like that in all his life. Immediately he gave him a microphone. He began to greet them. God called the name of the treasurer of the church. He called, he said, who is this? So, 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 so. He got up. He said, you are the treasurer of the church. He said, yes. He said, tell this church how much you have been stealing from the church account. Are you hearing me? They asked him, is it true? The man said, yes. He called another person. Listen, that time, this calling name was not raining. When he finished, five minutes, he handed over the microphone to them. Hmm. The pastor... <coughs> <laughs> he said, brethren, you can see that this man is more anointed than myself. He said, what do you, why don't you stay and pastor us? That's how he stayed and became steady. He's now a citizen of America for more than 28 years. He has been in America. And listen to me. In that church, we are big men connected in government. Before you say Jack Robinson, they got him American citizen. Citizenship. Ask Gave him money, transferred the wife and all the children. All of them studied in the US. They're in the US. In a question of one year. That's God for you. Leviticus 29. For everyone that cursed his father, are you still seeing that thing? Everyone that cursed his father or who? Shall surely be what? Surely. And he that cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. Some of us need repentance, you know. When you are angry, when you have a problem with your church, when you have a problem with your mother, when you have a problem with your father, when your father and your mother are quarreling, that's the most sensitive one. Be careful. Final scripture, Proverbs 30. Let's read 11 to 13. Proverbs 30, 11 to 13. There is a generation that cursed their father and does not bless. They do not bless their mother. Somebody say, I will bless my mother. Mm -hmm. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes. How are they right? Everybody is wrong. 
They are always, in fact, they are the only persons people offend. They only offend you. You don't offend people. You don't see your own iniquity. And yet, not washed from their filthiness. Because as long as you cannot own up, you are still filthy before God. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted. Finally, give us 17. The eye, the eye that mocked at his father. Hey, or despise to obey his mother. The reverence of the valley shall pick it out. And the young ego shall eat the eye. Did I not tell you something about a young man, Papa Bucharono? Of Ukraine, a dapper physical. Today he's is blind. Brethren, am I talking to somebody here? Bow your head and talk to God. You have had enough. Where you need to repent, you need to understand this thing is a serious matter. Tell God, Father, I'm sorry. In my relationship with my father, everywhere I aid here, as much as you can remember, tell him, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. If your father is dead, tell God, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. According to the multitude of my transgressions, be merciful unto me. Dear Lord, I have sinned. If you regard iniquity, who will stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Please forgive me. Forgive me my error. Forgive my shortcomings. Some of us, our mother was in pain. We never cared until they died out of his sorrowful heart. Thank God you have a God who can forgive. But the woman may not have forgiven you and died. You can ask God for forgiveness. As the Lord, every curse following you from your mother or from your father or from any of your spiritual leaders that you have not honored or related properly with, Ask God, please, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't know what I knew now. Ask the Lord to please use this meeting and release you from that curse.